Okay, let's talk about just general strategy uh, for shooting barricades. Uh, we're in a shoot house here, and you know, in this particular window, they've given me uh, eight different options, really nine. One, two, three, four, eight. And uh, more than likely, you're not gonna have to shoot all eight of those. You're probably gonna shoot one here, and one down there, and one down on the other end of the shoot house. So, when we're picking positions, when you've got an option to pick a position, you wanna keep in mind that what you're trying to do is create a stable shooting position. You're trying to create stability in your reticle. And instability in your reticle can be broken down into vertical and horizontal instability. And they're caused by two different things. Uh, as a general rule, when I come up to a barricade, I always want to keep my back as straight as possible. Okay, when you start bending out like this, say we're down here, this is too high for me to kneel, so I'm going to have to bend way down here. Now I'm having to use a lot of muscle to hold my body. My body is not particularly stable. So given a choice, I always want to keep my back as straight as possible. I can do that by spreading my legs out. In this particular case, I can spread my legs and I don't have a great deal of forward lean. And I'm able to put this hand up here and hold myself. <clears throat> but your, your back relative to your lower body is going to account for a great deal of your vertical stability. When you start having to lean way forward and hold yourself up, and there are match directors uh, who are famous for putting their, their railings and stuff at exactly that height where you have to lean way out. They do that for a reason. is because it decreases your stability. Um, I would rather be down here on both knees. Again, you can see that my back is fairly straight up and down. Okay, I've got my head tilted in, but the back is for the most part straight up and down, and I'm not leaned way out into the rifle. Okay? You'll also notice that I've got my knees spread. Now, whether we're standing or we're kneeling, what's going to determine our stability left and right or horizontally is going to be our feet. So your feet and your connection with the barricade itself. So I'm coming in here with my hand and I put my hand on the scope. Okay, I've got my legs spread, I've got my back straight. And it all goes back to natural point of aim. I want that natural point of aim here just like I had in the prone position. Okay, I want, before I ever come in here, I want the rifle pointed at the target. So that all I'm really coming in and doing is just holding the rifle still. Exhale. Hold the recoil. So really again, I want the rifle to do most of the work. I'm just in here kind of kind of keeping it pointed at the target. Okay. Now this goes back to the fact that on this particular barricade there's some inherent stability here. Okay, that rifle will sit there by itself. That's a pretty stable barricade. So that tells me that I don't need to do a whole lot. I need to point the rifle at the target and then I need to let it do its thing. You know, I don't need to be manhandling the rifle. And uh, so as you're selecting spots, when you have choices, when you go in a shoot house or you go on any barricade and you know, there's a lot of places we go where you'll have a barricade that'll have 15 different positions on it. Um, and you get to choose, you know, eight or 10 of them. Think about what's going to keep your back the straightest vertically and I think you'll find day in, day out, that that's going to really help you stay stable. Uh, and then all you've got to worry about then is your, your horizontal stability left and right. And if you think about it uh, ahead of time, you can usually work that out. I'm not going to get into, most guys want to get into specific bags and put this bag here and do that. I'm not going to do that because you really need to work that out for yourself. Um, I have a bag here that I, that I use that pushes back against my magazine that creates the horizontal stability I want. Um, and then the vertical stability comes just from the fact that this is a pretty stable, you know, it's a pretty stable barricade. So, yeah, a lot of guys that do these videos on barricade shooting want to take to use this bag and use that. I, I'm not going to go down that road because everybody's going to be different on that. One bag that works for you may not work for me. Uh, the one thing that I can tell you about positional shooting is it's very dependent on your body size. This is something where being six foot six is not an advantage. Okay, the short squatty guys like me typically are better at this because we have a lower center of gravity and we're just, 
you know, shorter and wider and more stable. Um, the taller guys, while they, you know, there's some, some guys that are tall that are very good barricade shooters, they don't do it the way I do it. Okay, if you watched me and uh, one of the taller guys, I can't think of anybody off the top of my head, but we might both clean a barricade stage, but I guarantee you we wouldn't be shooting it the same way. They'd be using different bags. They, their feet would be in completely different positions than mine. They might, there's a lot of guys that could, uh, that could kneel right here. I can't kneel here. I'm too short. But there are a lot of guys who could kneel right there and pull that off. Uh, so, so I'm not going to get into specific bags. On some of the other videos that we do, I'm going to show you some options on things, but you're going to have to figure out what works for you. And I would strongly suggest that when you get the chance that you fire some live, rain, live rounds down range uh, and see what works better because there's been uh, several instances where I've done some training and I had a setup that I thought was really stable when I dry fired and maybe another setup that I didn't think was quite as good, but when I started firing live rounds, I actually found the reverse to be true. Uh, that I actually hit more targets with the one that I didn't feel like was quite as stable. So you need to get out and actually practice. This is a lot about muscle memory. Uh, when I'm moving this rifle in and out of these holes, I'm not thinking about what I'm doing. That's all muscle memory. I'm looking at, the, I'm, all I'm looking at is the, is the target down range. When this comes into this window, okay, I want it pointed to the target. Okay, it's already squared up. I'm already pointed at the target, and all I'm doing is coming down, making an adjustment, getting some more contact, and I'm right there. Okay, that just takes practice. You're going to have to get out and practice. You're going to have to use muscle memory, and uh, you don't want to be thinking about shooting when you're shooting. Okay, it should all be built into your subconscious, and you should have done these routines enough where this is all pretty much automatic, and the only thing we should be thinking about is the wind okay that's really in the end all you should be thinking about when you're shooting is what's the wind doing okay all right we'll catch you on the next video thank you very much for watching